Okay, I'm gonna ask y'all one more time. Can you have hair down to your ass at a job interview? Is that okay? <laughs> But it's okay, I'm in the bathroom. I'm getting ready for a job interview. I'm about to do my hair, I'm about to do my makeup. I'm gonna show y'all my outfit. And then while I'm doing all of this, I'm gonna talk to y'all about me and basically what's been going on with me. Like how I'm making money now that I ain't got no job um, and how like the job market has been trying me. Like it's, it's hard out here to find a job right now, so. Please be sure that you want one. All right, so I'm about to, the easiest thing for me to do for this job interview, because I'm gonna try to make this as quick as possible, um, is put on a V-part wig. So I got one. I wanted to try a new hair company. And so far the hair is soft, but I'm gonna straighten this because I feel like when I, wear hair that's wavy or curly i look really young and i feel like i'd be doing these job interviews for like these big girl jobs and they probably be looking at me like i'm 12 years old so i'm gonna straighten the hair out i haven't done a v-part wig video in so long so just so y'all know these are the clips you just clip them clip it onto your head some people like will braid their hair i didn't get the gene for black girls that know how to braid so i'm just gonna put my hair like down and then clip this on. If you're new to this channel, hi, I recently quit my job and I did not have a backup job. Honestly, I felt like, I don't know, you, you ever feel like you just work at like a toxic workplace and it's no longer, like be, being broke is better than, than working here. That's honestly how I felt towards the end. Um, and there are a lot of reasons for that that I always say that I'll get into one day. One day I'll get into it. Maybe one day I'll go why, I, I'll film a video that's like why I quit my job. And I'll give you guys like all the reasons why I no longer wanted to work there. Um, I'm just not ready for that yet. I haven't even secured a new job yet. So let me, let me secure a new job first before I start, you know, talking shit. The job market is just crazy. I feel like I'll get to like the final round of interviews and then I'll get ghosted, which is so unprofessional to me. I can't stand recruiters that ghost you. I cannot stand recruiters that, that ghost you. Even if you don't have an answer, like when I used to recruit people, I would never in my life Leave, like leave someone just not knowing what's going on. And let's say I'm not the one that interviewed you and I'm just the recruiter. If I don't have an answer for you, I will, I will tell you that honestly, I will be like, look, I reached out to the manager. I asked them for feedback. I have not heard anything back. I'm so sorry, but if I do, I'll reach back out. But yeah, I've gotten like to the final round of interviews and a lot of these like interview processes and I'm just not hearing anything back at all. I'm just completely getting ghosted. Or on the contrary, there's other like fuck shit that's happening while I'm looking for jobs. So like, for instance, so like one job I apply for, there's four rounds of interviews, right? So it's supposed to be like three on Google Meet and then your last one is supposed to be in person at the clinic that you're gonna be working at. And I guess that's like your, like, you know, like your personality fit. That's when you go meet everybody in person so they can see if you're like gonna be a fit for the clinic. So this place, I, like I, it frustrates me so much because I hate feeling like I wasted my time. So in my second round of interviews, I spoke to this lady and she basically, the interviews was an hour long. It only was like 25 minutes long. It wasn't long at all. So the lady interviewed me and then like at the end of the interview, she was like, I really enjoyed talking to you. Um, I'm gonna pass you on to the next interview. Told me that I didn't have to do the third interview she said that instead she was passing me straight on to like the the in-person interview. So I didn't even need to do the third interview. She was like, we're just gonna pass you on to the in-person. And then she was asking me because they were opening up another location of this specific clinic. They were like, you know, we're opening up another location, but the location is gonna be kind of far out. And then she told me like where it was gonna be. And she was like, you know, 
would you be open to doing that one too? Would you be open to working at that one too? And to be honest with you, I wasn't open to working to that one. I wasn't open to working at that one, but I didn't want to say that on the phone. So I wasn't, I wasn't like, no, I just want to stick with this one. I just wanted to like get the job so then I could be like, you know, thank you for interviewing me for both, but this is the one that I want to stick with. So I was like, you know, we'll see after I do the in-person, you know, which location I would be a best fit for. So she was like, okay, cool. She was like, all right. It was, so it was like Friday afternoon. She's like, okay, so you're not going to hear anything back today. She's like, okay. So she was like, okay, so I need to get you on the calendar, but you're not going to hear anything back today. Cause it was like, it was like late Friday afternoon. She was like, so you're probably going to hear from somebody on Tuesday. Cause the girl, the girl that was like my recruiter, she was like, she's off on Monday. What, she was just giving me like all these reasons. She was like, so you're going to hear back probably on Tuesday. If you don't hear back from us, please reach out to us so that we can get you set up for the in-person. We're really super excited and we're trying to get somebody to go into training quickly. And I will have to go out of town for training. So she was like, you know, we need to move on this quickly. So, so the day rolls around where she basically was like, you know, if you don't hear back from us, please reach out to us so that we can get you set up with your in-person. So I reach out to my recruiter and I'm like, hey girl, such and such told me, you know, if I didn't hear back from you guys by this day, for me to reach out to you so that you can get me on the calendar for the in-person. So she wrote me back and she's like, okay, perfect. Let me reach out to such and such and get you on the calendar. So I didn't hear nothing back for the rest of the day. So the day after that, one of the girls that I had been in contact with, they sent me like a generic email that basically said, we're not moving forward with you in the process anymore. Um, you know, but we're going to keep your profile on file for any future positions that we're, that we're going to have or, or something like that. Basically, I'm not getting the job at the Atlanta clinic, but they're going to keep my profile on file for maybe like another clinic, which one, you didn't ask me if I wanted you to do that. I don't because I don't even appreciate the way this whole process went. Two, I mean, I sent the, the girl an email asking this because what are you talking about right now? I passed my interview. You told me that you were put, putting me putting me through to the next. I did so well on my interview that I was able to skip the third interview and go straight to the last interview. And you even asked me if I was open to another location. You liked me so much that you were considering me for two different locations. And then a few days later, I hear back that I didn't get the job. Like it just, Recruiters are uh, recruiters are so annoying. And then the girl who I reached out to anyway to get the feedback, she is probably the worst recruiter that I've ever communicated with in my life. So she did my first interview, which wasn't even an interview to be honest with you. She called me. She was like fast talking. Hi, I'm such I'm such and such and I'm hiring at such and such. I just wanted to let you know that I saw your uh your resume. Super impressed with your resume and you know, I want to, I want to set you up for a second. And like, it wasn't, she, she was just fast talking to get me off the phone. I think she had like a quota to fill for people that she had to call, but that was supposed to be considered a first interview. And it wasn't, she just was like, Hey, how you doing? Yeah. 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 Do you have questions for me? Yeah. Yeah. Like every time you would say something to her, she was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So kind of like hurry up and get you off the phone. And I really was like, okay, so this is not a first interview. This is you calling me to tell me that you like my resume and you're gonna let somebody else interview me. So, all right, so this is the side that's wavy. If you wanna leave the hair in its natural state, natural state, and then this is the straight side. You see how I feel like this side makes me look younger, but like when I straighten this side, I look like, yeah. Oh, and if you watch uh watched my last vlog, this was a vlog that I literally did this interview on my vacation. Like I, I went through this interview on my vacation because I felt so that's just another like big F you to my face that I feel like I kind of wasted my time. But at the same time, as I was going through the interview process, I was getting so many red flags with this company anyway, where it kind of felt like you're the same as a company that I work for now. You're just kind of like a different industry, if that makes sense. So whatever, to be honest with you, I think it's just the pride of not getting passed on to that last interview because I don't know if I would accept 
that job anyway. The interview that I'm doing today is actually the one that I'm hoping that I get because this is this is the job that I feel like has the best company culture. And I'm gonna be honest, it doesn't pay as much as some of the other jobs that I have been offered because I have gotten a couple job offers, but it's it's not really for companies that I wanna work for um, or industries that I wanna work in. Um, but this job, they don't pay as much as some of the other job offers that I got, but they do have a really, really, really good company culture. And it's very rare that a company has you know, a pretty decent score on Glassdoor. I don't know if any of you guys use Glassdoor, but they have a really good score on Glassdoor for a company. You know, like most most Glassdoor, most time, most of the time you go to a company's page on Glassdoor, they'll have like two stars, like 2.6, like no, but everybody goes on there to bash the company, but this place has really good reviews. I, I think they have like four stars or almost four stars, which is kind of unheard of, unheard of on Glassdoor. There was another company that did me, uh, like how I told y'all how this uh, uh, this company did me. There was another company that did me like that, but this this one was even worse. This one was even worse because I did an interview with them, and this one actually did last an hour. It lasted over an hour, I think. I think the interview was like an hour and twenty minutes, and this lady and I had. It, you ever had a really good interview and you're so confused when you don't at least if you don't get the job and or don't get the next interview so she we did the interview and the interview went so well and then at the end of the interview the lady says to me um you know i really you know i really enjoyed talking to you um i was wondering if you know, after hearing everything that I had to say about the job, are you still, you know, interested in working here? Because, you know, she basically made it seem like she wants to job offer me, but she wants to make sure that after she explained the role and everything that I still want it. And I was like, absolutely. So she was like, perfect, great. I'll be reaching out to you soon. We hang up. I got a a text message the next day from the original recruiter that I was, um, that I had interviewed with. And it said, you know, just the generic, hey, Yana, we're not gonna be moving forward with you. Uh, we're gonna go with someone who, who aligns better with the position or something like that. And my thing is, that means that the lady knew on the Zoom that she didn't like me or she didn't wanna move forward with me or whatever. And why are you giving me hope on these interviews if you know that you're not moving forward with me there's no reason for you to sit here and say um oh we're gonna move you on to the next interview or oh we really like you or all this shit that you're saying to me to make me feel like i'm gonna move on to the next process in the interview if you know that you're not moving on with me just say great you'll hear from someone soon in regards to your candidacy that's what this guy said to me for this uh i had applied to this dental place to be a sales consultant um, a, a couple months ago. And when we got off that Zoom, that man said to me, great, somebody will be in touch with you uh, in regards to your candidacy. I knew for a fact after he said that that I was not getting the job. And I didn't get the job. But he didn't give me no false hope on the on the Zoom call that he was gonna give me a job that he and he knew he didn't like me by the end of the interview. Speaking of which, that man had, that man that I interviewed with had such like a fragile ego. Like we were on the phone and he was saying, he had said something smart to me like, oh, why are you leaving a company? And I had said, you know, I'm looking for growth. And he was like, well, the only growth in this, in this company uh, after your, you know, a consultant would be my job, which is a territory sales manager. He was like, the only growth that you would have with this company is my job and I'm not going anywhere anytime soon. So honestly, after he said that, I knew I wasn't getting the job because I had made it clear to him that I'm looking for growth. And I don't know if he felt like I was gonna be coming for his job, but he made it very clear that the only way to move up would be if you got his job and he wasn't going anywhere anytime soon. And I was like, okay. Like, I didn't, I didn't even have a comeback for that. Like, I didn't even know what to say in that interview. Cause why are you so defensive about your position? I'm not applying for your position right now. But dental 
and hair restoration. Those are two industries that I've really been looking to like break into. It's hard to get into them, but I've been look, I've been really looking to break into those two industries because honestly, not even just that's where the money is because it is as a consultant work consultants that work for hair restoration places like where they, you know, give male give mostly men sometimes women but mostly men hair transplants and then and then or you're selling teeth the yeah that's where the money is but also that's kind of where you feel like you're making the most difference in someone's life not to say that you know when i worked in like liposuction that i didn't feel like that but there's only so much you can do there's there is shit you can do you know you can go to the gym to fix your body if you don't like it liposuction gives you gives you a shape but you have other options but when your teeth is gone, your teeth are gone. Or when your hair just falls out because you're genetic, you're genetically predisposed to your hair falling out, that's just what it is. So you feel like you're making a bigger impact in somebody's life by the time they get their results. And I kind of just felt shallow in my job, if that makes sense. All right, we are all straightened out, about to blend my leave out. But anyway, I wanted to talk to y'all a little bit too about kind of what I've been doing since I've quit. So jumping back into YouTube has, of course, it's not easy when you haven't been really consistent in something for a while because jumping right back into YouTube, of course, if I'm not consistent and I haven't posted in a while, my audience, you're not getting back-to-back -back videos, so you're not on my page waiting to see when I post my next video, which is what I'm used to. I'm used to sometimes not all the time but when i was consistent most of my videos would hit like ten thousand views and for me that's a lot because i only have like eighty thousand followers on here but i would hit ten thousand views in a day so i always had really good engagement but like my last video which would have hit like 10 to twenty thousand views in a day my last vlog that the first day it only hit like three or four thousand views and then after that I think the second day, it finally hit like nine, eight to 9,000 views. And then the third day, it hit 10,000, not $10,000, but 10,000 views. And at that rate, I'm definitely not going to be able to make, you know, the type of money that I was making on YouTube before I had got that job in the first place. So y'all know that when I got a job, I got a job because I was depressed doing YouTube and talking to yourself all day and not you know, waiting for Amy to get home all day. I really, I was going through something. So I really needed a job. I really needed to talk to people. Um, But then when I got the job, I completely started neglecting my channel, which was never my intention, but that's what I did. So, especially because I was making so much money at my job, but I'm so stupid because I could have been making double the money by making the money on YouTube and making the money at my job. But I wasn't thinking like that. I just was like, you know what? I'm making the money at work. I'm so tired when I get off, I don't wanna come home and film a video. So like, yeah, I felt bad when people were hitting me up and was like, hey, you know, we haven't gotten a video from you in this long, we want a video, we want a video. I just like, I wanna film a video, but I just don't feel like it. I work 24 seven, I'm never off. So it's, take, it's gonna take me a while to build up, you know, the revenue that I used to build up for, even like hair videos. I mean, I'm doing a hair video right now uh, which honestly shout out to them because this hair is soft as hell and this uh, wig is thick as fuck usually I get um I'll get wigs like v-part wigs from companies and they be thin especially once you um straighten it out this hair is heavy and it's thick so if you like thick hair if that's what you into right here but anyway even in terms of sponsorships the reason why I used to get so many sponsorships, hair sponsorships, sponsorships from anybody is because I was consistent in posting. So they see you pop up all the time and then they want to reach out to you. But when you're not, you're not putting no videos out like that, you're not even putting yourself out there to get sponsorships. So even like hair sponsorships, I don't always like doing hair sponsorships. I do sometimes when I really need to do my damn hair. I would love, I love getting hair sponsorships, but you know, I don't want to do a hair sponsorship like every day like I used to. But even hair sponsorships, I'm used to 10 hair companies hitting me up every fucking day. And I have to say, 
no, thank you. I'm not accepting hair sponsorships right now, but I'll reach out to you when I will. But honestly, they're like far and few between right now because I have to build, I have to build my, um, what's it called? I have to build my audience back up. I have to build my trust back up with like you guys and the hair companies, just everybody. I have to build everything back up to be able to make money again. So I can't expect for, and I have to get a job right now because I cannot expect for Amy to pay the bills. I got hair, nails, all type of shit that I gotta do. Have her pay for that. We go on vacation all the time. Pay for the vacations. Like I can't vlog if I'm not doing shit and you gotta have money to do shit. So I have to work until I get to a point on here where I don't feel like I need, like not even like, I don't wanna make the same amount of money here as I was making. I need to make more. Like it needs to make sense for me to have to quit, quit a job completely. You know, and for me right now, it doesn't, it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense to not work, if that makes sense. I hope this video is like not stupid because this is literally just me ranting. Okay, so about to do these edges. I use this edge control now. My niece, when she was living here, she put me onto this. My edges don't move when I use this at all. Don't like three days. Three days of me not wearing a scarf at all and my edges still stay in place. So I need y'all to tell me if y'all think that this hair is appropriate because it is long. Like, can I do a job interview or should I cut it? Like, would you hire me if my hair is touching my ass? All right, so we're gonna do quick makeup, like really quick. I want the makeup to be like, cute but i want it to be natural i don't want to go in there um looking like i got like a full-on like beat face because it's a job interview i can beat my face when i'm going to like actual work but like i said this is the one that i really want so pants I'm gonna wear and I know what shoes I'm gonna wear I just need to find a top so these are the pants I'm gonna wear they're these really cute pinstripe pants from Naked Wardrobe throw them on right now while I find me a shirt and then these are the shoes I'm gonna wear you're not gonna see like this part because the pants are gonna cover it but these are I'm not exaggerating Steve Madden did a thing on these shoes I have never in my life worn more comfortable heels I wore those in St. Bart's like I can walk for hours in those shoes and my feet will not hurt. Okay, I'm gonna ask y'all one more time. Can you have hair down to your ass at a job interview? Is that okay? No? Yes? Let me know in the comments. All right, so this would be the outfit. Pinstripe pants, plain black shirt, and then my little black heels that I was telling you guys about. So you wanna be cute and fashionable, but still professional. Cause like I said, this is aesthetics. So I need to be cute and fashionable because I'm selling shit. But at the same time, I don't wanna look unprofessional. So I'm gonna go put on a solid black shirt. But I just wanna thank you guys for tuning into this video. And thank you guys for sticking with me. I will see you in my next one. I'll let y'all know too. If by the time this video goes up, I know if I got the job or not, I'll let y'all know in like the comments, in like a pinned comment. But if I don't know yet, I'll let y'all know soon. I'm hoping that I know by the time that this video goes out whether or not I got this job. But if I don't get the job, we'll keep looking. And if I do, yay me, okay? So, bye! Yeah.